Double Bubble today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a super, super soft Hokkaido milk bread using a Tang Zong. And, and possibly one of the best sandwiches known. The Katsu Sando is a textural masterpiece. Crunchy panko chicken thighs, a sweet, sour, and savory Nanban sauce, and a crunchy Japanese-inspired tartar sauce, all wrapped up in a pillowy soft Hokkaido milk bread. First, we need to make a quick tang zong, which will be used in the main dough. So in my pan, I'm adding 100 grams of milk. It's got a fat content of 3.5%. I'm gonna add 10 grams of all-purpose flour and 10 grams of strong bread flour. I'm gonna pop the pan onto a medium-high heat. I've selected number six out of nine on my temperature setting. Heat the mixture while continuously whisking it. Keep it going until it thickens. Then it just needs to be removed from the heat and left to one side to cool down to room temperature. Now in my pan, I've got 165 grams of milk, again, 3.5% fat, and I've warmed it ever so slightly on the heat. I'm tight on time today, and bringing that milk up to room temperature will speed the process up a little. You don't need to do this. The recipe works perfectly using the milk cold directly from the fridge. It will just take a little bit longer. Now to the milk, I'm gonna add 30 grams of white sugar, followed by one whole egg, and then I'll give the mixture a quick mix. So in my original recipe, I added powdered milk, but so many people asked if they could leave it out to save them buying it specifically for the recipe. So today I'm gonna to leave it out, and at the end, we'll see what the results are like. Next up, I've got seven grams of salt going in, followed by another mix, and then seven grams of instant yeast is just sprinkled on the top. In my mixing bowl, I'm combining 175 grams of soft all-purpose flour and 175 grams of strong bread flour. I'm gonna add the Tang Zong, and remember, it needs to be cooled down to room temperature, and make sure you give that pan a proper scrape. You wanna get every last bit out of that pan. Add the wet mixture from the pan, making sure not to leave any yeasty mixture behind, using a spoon, and then your hand, bring that mixture together into a rough dough. Now, it doesn't need to be smooth at this stage, just make sure there's no pockets of dry flour. We're gonna cover this, we're gonna leave it out at room temperature for 20 minutes. And today, my kitchen is 16 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is an interesting dough to handle. It is a little sticky, but it's still easy enough to work with. When you first start to knead, little bits of dough will break off the main mass and kind of stick to the bench. But as you knead, you'll gradually feel that dough come together and become more cohesive, leaving less bits behind on the bench. And after six to seven minutes of kneading, the dough should be nice and smooth. And now we can add 25 grams of room temperature unsalted butter. Now, if it's a little bit cold, you can warm it up by pushing it and squeezing it through your fingers. And I have a feeling I'm gonna get a few comments from the glove police, but trust me, as long as your hands are clean, you are allowed to touch your ingredients. Keep working that dough until the butter is incorporated and it's nice and smooth. It'll probably take about five minutes or so. And then we can boil the dough up, pop it back in the bowl, cover it, and leave it out at room temperature once again to prove. Now, once the dough has roughly doubled in size, it's time to shape. Now, this took about two and a half hours to prove at my room temperature. I'm using a non-stick Pullman tin with a lid for this loaf. I'll leave the details for this pan in the video description and in the recipe on the website. Now, even though the tin is non-stick, I always give the inside a coating with oil. I'm using olive oil here, but any simple cooking oil will work. Now I'm gonna divide and weigh the dough into three equal pieces and then shape each one into a ball. Now I'm gonna lightly dust the work surface. I'm gonna roll each ball into an oval shape. You do not need to stress too much about the size. The dough should be roughly the width of the tin and somewhere around three quarters of the length of the tin. We can then roll that dough up into a sausage shape and repeat with the other two pieces. Place them into the tin next to each other. Now, if they're a touch too big, you can gently squeeze them in, and if they're a touch small, don't stress, they will expand to fill the tin, as this proves. Now, there are two schools of thought on how to cover the tin while the dough is proving. I like to cover it with the lid, and then I just keep checking it to see how far the dough is rising up the tin. Once it touches the lid, 
I can pop it in the oven. But the downside is, if the dough overproves, it can jam up the sliders and it makes it a nightmare to remove the lid. Now the alternative is to cover the tin with a bag and just before the dough proves to the top of the tin, you can cover it with the lid. The downside here is that if the dough overproves, you're never gonna be able to slide that lid on. So pick which method you'd rather use. Just remember that either way, you're gonna to need to keep an eye on this dough while it proves. Now once it has touched the top of the lid, it's time to bake and this is gonna bake in an oven that's been preheated to 180 degrees Celsius or 355 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 to 40 minutes. Now the crust is gonna color quickly, so make sure to check in on it towards the end of that bake. Then you can remove it from the oven, turn it straight out onto a cooling rack and leave it to cool completely to room temperature. The sandwich that I'm about to make is fully loaded. So we need a bread that's robust enough to hold the ingredients together, but still soft enough to make it a dream to eat. Now, even without the milk powder in this recipe, it tastes amazing. Maybe I'd notice in a side-by-side -side comparison, but I certainly can't tell now. I watched Angelo Sato make this katsu sando on Saturday Kitchen a couple of weeks ago, and I was hooked. This is packed with textures and floods the taste buds with sweet, sour and savoury. This needs to be built off of two very thick slices of milk bread. First I'm going to add the tartar sauce and that's been made with QP mayonnaise, pickles, parsley, egg, red onion and Dijon mustard. Now the full katsu sando recipe is linked below. Next we've got a layer of shredded white cabbage and that's topped with a nanban sauce. It's a reduction of rice vinegar, soy sauce and sugar. Now, if you make this sauce, make extra, because I promise you, you'll fall in love with it very quickly. The cucumber has been sliced really thin, then salted and drained. The chicken was panned in corn flour, egg, panko breadcrumbs, and then deep fried. And after another drizzle of the nanban sauce, we pop the lid on this almighty creation. Now, normally at this point, I'd be clearing up and getting ready to take some pictures and film some B-roll, but there was no way I was waiting to eat this. This is a killer sandwich, a textural flavor bomb of sweet, sour, and savory. Now, cutting the crusts off makes this look pretty, but none of the other sandwiches I made got that treatment. Thanks to Angelo and Saturday Kitchen for an inspiring sandwich. If you're struggling with your sourdough baking, then there could be two easy fixes, and you can find out what they are by watching this video here. Now, let me know what you think to the milk bread and this killer sandwich combination. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.